Now, who knew the Baltimore Ravens beating the San Francisco 49ers was going to bring out a lot of nasty and disgusting dialogue amongst a lot of people in regards to Lamar Jackson? Now, of course, that game, as we have all talked about, that game catapulted Lamar Jackson to the front of so many people's MVP race. They say, all right, Lamar Jackson is now the clear favorite to win the NFL's MVP award this year because of that game and obviously all the other games before it too because he is a pretty valuable person to the Baltimore Ravens and to just to the NFL as a whole. But some people have talked about, oh, Lamar Jackson doesn't deserve it because of numbers. Some people have talked about, oh, well, I feel like this player deserves it over Lamar Jackson because of numbers and because of his impact on the team. And I'm cool with all that. I enjoy hearing people's different viewpoints, but... Well, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan is when people take it a step further and not in such a good way. Fox Sports Radio, Monse Bolanos, uh, she had some interesting comments to say about Lamar Jackson. And you know what? I'm going to just let you listen to it. Uh, you don't think Lamar Jackson's the most valuable player in the National Football League? No, I don't. This is absurd. I, I, what are you talking about? And y'all are absurd. Listen, I, this sounds like I don't like Lamar Jackson, and that's not what it is at all. I think Lamar Jackson has come out and has become a better quarterback this year. He is doing better than I thought throwing the ball and just, you know, being the quarterback, especially after losing his favorite target to uh, Mark Andrews. And I, I see it. I see it. So, so far, so good, right? She ain't say nothing outlandish. She ain't say nothing crazy. She feel like Lamar Jackson has been a better quarterback than he has in the past. And that is true. He has gotten even better this year. Uh, and then she also mentioned, hey, he's been doing it with all, without Mark Andrews. So that makes a big difference as well. But let's continue. But to me, the MVP is somebody who has been kicking cheeks and taking names week after week. He had a great game against the 49ers. Great game. The defense, exquisite against the 49ers. But he's also had four games this year without a touchdown pass. Four. Then he's had other games where he had one touchdown. Two games. Like, he's, he has not been, I, in the words of, uh, of Colin Cowhart, stars attract stars. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is what we do, <laughs> you know, in Rich Way. So she talked about where he's had multiple games without a touchdown pass. Pass, and then he's had a game where he only threw one touchdown pass. Again, she th those are facts. But this th this is what I was talking about earlier this week when it came to something that I really appreciated about Lamar Jackson, even being in the MVP conversation and being the front runner. It showed me that a lot of people are no longer just going by the box score. They're not just looking at a bunch of stats and being like, okay, well, here's that, here's that, here's that. okay, well, uh, that looks like MVP stuff. Well, that doesn't. No, they're actually watching the games. And like we said, to really, and, and I, I can tell that she doesn't really appreciate him like that. And hey, that, that's okay. Every, he's not everybody's cup of tea. But I think it's very important to have an accurate discussion when it comes to Lamar Jackson. You have to watch the games. You have. <laughs> you like you cannot just go by the box score because Lamar Jackson is not just a box score quarterback. A lot of stuff that he does, there are no numbers for. There are no actual statistics for. You know how many times and I mean y'all seen it we can't, I can't even count the number of times off the top of our head where Lamar Jackson has faced pressure. Made somebody miss, made somebody else miss, found somebody downfield, or end up taking off for a big play. We've seen that time and time again, time and time again throughout the years. There's no stat for that. There's no stat for, oh, this is how many, many uh, pass rushes that he made miss in the pocket. and it, like There's so much stuff that he does on a weekly basis. And I just feel like it doesn't go appreciated enough by so many people in the national media because, and I get it, they don't watch every single Ravens game. I get that. But still, to really understand who and how special Lamar Jackson is, you got to watch him play. But let's continue because we ain't done yet. I want my quarterbacks to be quarterbacky, And to me, Lamar Jackson is just a great athlete, and he's done a really good job, and he had a great game against the 49ers. Prisoners of the moment, he is not the MVP. Christian McCaffrey is the MVP, and he has been. I've been saying this for weeks. It's not like I just decided after this game. that That's what happened with Lamar. After this game, he jumped up, but he wasn't even in the conversation. He was like... 
a, an afterthought. It was always like to a duck. No, it's Christian McCaffrey. And then two, and you know, I'm not a huge fan of Tyreek Hill because of what he does off the field, but you know, a separate conversation. He's in the second one. If it's not Christian, it's Tyreek Hill. Those are the two that have stood out every week, every week. Not Lamar Jackson. It's not that I don't like Lamar. It's not that he's not doing a good job. He is doing a good job. But he's not the MVP. So that part right there is what got the world heated uh, with what she had to say. Because it went from bad to worse. Because she said, I want my quarterbacks to be quarterbacky. I want my quarterbacks to be quarterbacky. And right there when she said that, I was like, ooh, I, I hope this doesn't get any worse. But then it did. Because she said, Lamar Jackson is just an athlete. She said he's just an athlete that has been doing a good job, that had a good game against the 49ers, but she said so many people are getting caught in being prisoners of the moment because he wasn't in the MVP conversation before. She said before it was guys like Tua. Uh, it was CMC. Uh, it was Tyreek Hill. It was Dak Prescott, which it was, but Lamar Jackson was usually around like number five uh, when it came to those guys. But she said people are prisoners of the moment because they catapulted him to the top because of this one good game but the quarterbacky part and the Justin athlete in my opinion I feel like that is extremely disrespectful uh to Lamar Jackson to everything that he's accomplished like for people to still still he's been in the league since 2018 been in the league since 2018 that was his rookie year and as you all know so many people wanted him to change positions they wanted him to be a running back, to be a receiver, but to be all other kind of stuff. But everything but a quarterback. But him, he said, no, I'm a quarterback. I'm not running a 40. I don't want to run a 40 to put anybody's head that I'm going to play any other position. No, I'm a quarterback. And for people this far down the road, years later, to still have that same vision of Lamar as just an athlete after everything that he's accomplished and everything that he's done and everything that he's continued to accomplish for people to still say he's just an athlete that's extremely disrespectful to him extremely extremely i was just having this conversation with my wife the other day and i was talking about how with with athletes it's not just about athleticism because you can be the fastest you can be the strongest, you can be the quickest, you can have the best hands in the world, you can have the biggest arm in the world, you can have all of that stuff, you can have the best skill set in the world, but if you don't have it up here, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You could have all of that stuff, but if you don't have the mind, the smarts to get it done, you won't be successful, even if you have all those things. With Lamar Jackson... People try to, they try to punish him almost for being somebody that is definitely athletically gifted, who has the mindset too, who has the smarts too. Since he has both, people try, some people, not everybody, they try to make it like it's a bad thing. And it's not, it just makes him that much more dangerous, the fact that he does have both. I said this back in 2018, that with Lamar Jackson, he will never, ever, 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 no matter what he does, no matter what he accomplishes, that he will never, ever be good enough for some people. Ever. Ever. And that still obviously holds true to this day. You can give Christian McCaffrey a most outstanding offensive player. You can give him the Offensive Player of the Year awards. That That's fine. But the... The value of what Lamar Jackson provides to the Baltimore Ravens is more than Christian McCaffrey. This is a Niners team, again, Monty, that chased a stupid touchdown record and tried to get Christian McCaffrey NFL history in a game where they were up 30 points. Just because he scores a lot of touchdowns doesn't put him over the edge. And because he's scoring touchdowns every week doesn't make him the most valuable player. And I don't even think that's all it is because Raheem Mostert has, what, 21 touchdowns for... Uh, Miami scored this season. It's not even just that. It's the eye test. He looks 
Like, no one can stop him. When they were playing the Ravens, his touchdown that he scored where it was still close, nobody could stop him. He looked unstoppable when he hit the, when he scored that touchdown. And I just, like, no quarterback. I know that it's like, this is a quarterback award, which is so annoying to hear. No quarterback has had a dominant performance the entire season. And if I am going to give it to a quarterback, how is it not Tua? Like, I don't, I, it is, I don't think it's Lamar. And even though everyone is shifting that way, I just don't see it because of this game. It's it, we're prisoners of the moment. Absolutely not. Shouldn't have been this, then this past game be the game that Christian McCaffrey takes over. And then, shouldn't and, he have taken over that game? You know, it's really hard when your quarterback throws four picks. It's really hard. You don't get the ball as, as often, but he had more rushing yards. McCaffrey by himself than the entire Ravens offense on the ground. So Dan Bayer, uh, who was her co-host for this segment, he made some points about the 49ers and Christian McCaffrey, and he talked about how they were chasing this touchdown record, which I got no problem with a team doing. Hey, break all the records that you want to. But he talked about with Christian McCaffrey, he, with them chasing that touchdown record, he said they were still trying to score and they were up 30 and whatnot. But the way I look at it, look, the game ain't over till it's over. It ain't over till the clock hits zero. So score as many points as you want. But another point that he made was that Christian McCaffrey, yeah, he scored a bunch of touchdowns, but he talked about Lamar Jackson's value. He said Lamar Jackson's value is more than Christian McCaffrey's is when it comes to their respective teams. And back to her, in that same portion that we just watched, she also talked about how it's the eye test. Oh, it's the eye test. So what the eye test is, that's when you actually see something for yourself. You don't hear about it. You don't read about it, but you actually see it for yourself. And the eye test in football is when you actually watch the game. You watch specific players. You watch for certain things. But the point is that you watch. And she said for Christian McCaffrey that he looked unstoppable. And in this Ravens game specifically, she talked about where he looked unstoppable. She did not make any mention of Lamar Jackson looking unstoppable, which, hey, okay, if you don't want to make mention of that, that's, it is what it is. But think about this. If Christian McCaffrey is your MVP, Lamar Jackson is some other people's MVPs, not yours, obviously, but in a game where it's the best of the best, these are the top two teams in the league. Literally in the league, they got the same record. They at the top of their conferences, two top teams in the league. You would think that this would be the game where your MVP shows up to play, right? Right. So, Christian McCaffrey, he did his thing in that game, uh, but she said he looked unstoppable. Lamar Jackson, he did his thing in that game. She didn't say he looked unstoppable. Which one of those two, te- which one of those two players had the bigger impact on their team? Which, which one of those two players had the bigger impact on the outcome of their game for their team? And which team, which one of those two players' performances impacted their team more? And then she did talk about, oh, well, uh, it's kind of hard to get touches when your quarterback throws four interceptions. And it is. That is true. But it still does not take away Lamar Jackson's value. And if Christian McCaffrey was truly that unstoppable, then Brock Party wouldn't have had to throw them passes. He would have just been able to hand it off to Christian McCaffrey. Toss it to Christian McCaffrey, pitch it to Christian McCaffrey, and if he was truly that unstoppable, he wouldn't have been stopped. Then she continued the conversation and said that with the MVP, it's a quarterback award, and she doesn't like that. Okay, hey, I I, I get it. I, I ain't got no problem with that at all because I do feel like some other people should be candidates for the MVP award. Um, and she did like she, like she mentioned earlier, um, Tyreek Hill, he was a candidate, CMC and whatnot. Uh, but she said since it's a quarterback award. She said she feels like it should go to Tua Tagovailoa. Now, I really like Tua. Um, I, I really like Tua, and I was talking to my Dolphins friends. You know, hey, get this game coming up, it, it's personal. Because y'all know I'm down here in Miami. I'm dealing with all these Dolphins. Anyway, um, and one of, my, one of my friends asked me, he's like, well, how do you feel about the Dolphins? How do you feel about them? And this was before the season started. And, and I said with the Dolphins, I feel like they can do really good. Uh, it just depends on Tua's health. If Tua can be healthy, the Dolphins can be a good team. And Tua has been doing his thing. Now, the thing with Tua, though, and the whole MVP thing versus Lamar Jackson with Tua um, and the Dolphins, before the Cowboys game, when did they beat a team that they were going up against that had a winning record? That right there, 
that ended the whole Lamar Jackson tour conversation, in my opinion. Because the Dolphins, and you're supposed to do this, they beat up on them bad teams. They, they beat them bad teams up for sure. Great job. But when it came to playing good teams, when it came to playing playoff teams, they always fell short. Until the Cowboys game. Now, then you look on the flip side. Look at Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. How have they done against teams with winning records, against playoff teams? And it's no comparison. It, it, it's no comparison at all. So, again, with Lamar Jackson, it, 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 this week I, I've really appreciated the fact that so many people, um, they really started to take the eye test for themselves. They really started to realize, like, hold up. It's not all about the box score. It's not just all about the numbers. They do play a big role, for sure. But it goes much deeper than that.